Hey there everybody, this is Austin, and today we're going to be talking about one of Silvis Technologies' flagship products, the SC4200, which is powered by their proprietary MN MIMO waveform. We're also going to dive into some of the basic functionality of how it can integrate into your tactical bubble to unify your operational assets and the features that make this a need for your team. Before we do that, Let's talk a little bit about the company that's behind the product and the history of Silvis Technologies. Now, Silvis's MIMO-based radio technology actually started development back in 1994, and it was started by former UCLA electrical engineering professor, Dr. Babak Dane Schrad, using DARPA-funded R&D. Uh, one of the things that's unique about Silvis Technologies is that since the beginning, they're one of the only Manet radio providers that developed their radio and their waveform technology from the ground up. Now, this enables them to do things that others just can't because they're not constrained by the limitations of off-the-shelf Wi-Fi chipset. Silvis Dreamcaster radios are really powerful software-defined radios, which means that they're future-proofed. So as an end user, you're going to take advantage of continuous improvements that Silvis makes by simply downloading the latest firmware and flashing that to your radio. Now, while the software and the algorithms themselves are complex, the real benefits of Stringcaster is actually the simple user experience. Bringing another radio into a Silvish mess network is seamless and it requires minimal prep work. Now, the latest generation that I have here, the SC4200, uh, is really the result of 19 years of continuous innovation uh, that delivers high fidelity voice, video, and data in some of the toughest environments, all without the need for existing infrastructure. So before we look at the radio itself, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what I mean by the lack of a need for existing infrastructure. And that's really only possible because these are Manet radios. Now, Manet radios, which means mobile ad hoc network radio, every radio, in a MANET network acts as a transmitter, a receiver, and a repeater simultaneously to enable communications between multiple users. Now, it works in tandem with its MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, antenna scheme to form a self-forming, self-healing mesh network that's capable of long-distance communication uh, in extremely complex or even RF-challenging environments. Now, self-forming and self-healing is a crucial characteristic of a MANET radio system. Uh, in a true mesh network, radios can join or leave the network at any time, and the network will continue to adjust its topology and adapt as nodes move in relation to each other. Now, this implies a decentralized architecture in that there's no master radios that are required to administer control of the network, and communications will continue to persist even when nodes enter or leave the network. So this is very different from legacy radios of the past that could only ever talk end to end and were often limited in the feature sets and in their bandwidth. They were also limited in range because like I said, unless they were employing some type of repeater or any type of infrastructure, they were limited to end to end communications. Now, looking at the SC4200, you can see the face of the radio actually functions as the primary heatsink of the device for thermal management. Uh, the radio itself is IP68 rated and it's almost identical in size to legacy tactical radios of the past. So you're probably going to be able to use the same radio pouches that you've been using with other radios. Uh, now at the bottom is where you're actually going to find the twist lock battery connector. And this is where you'll connect either a battery or some type of power supply. And with these batteries, you're able to get about 12 hours of use on a standard use cycle. Now the top, is where you're going to find uh, the two antenna ports, all of your I.O., the on-off multifunction switch, and your status indicator LED. Uh, one of the most striking features about the SC4200 is those dual antennas, and that allows a couple really cool things to take place. Uh, the first one is going to be that two by two MIMO, again, multi-in, multi-out, and what it means is that two signals can be simultaneously either uh, transmitting or receiving into the radio itself. The other really cool thing that it's able to do with that MIMO technology uh, is what's called Eigen Beam Farming. And what this means is that it's able to actually steer its radio signal and really swing above its weight class in terms of its transmit power without requiring additional input power. So for example, this model is capable of 10 watts of output power and thanks to Eigen Beam Farming, that enables it to achieve the performance of an equivalent 20 watt conventional simplex radio. For more, uh, at the halt or fixed applications, uh, it's important to note that you could also get the Silvis Streamcaster 4400, uh, which is a 4x4 MIMO radio, and it produces up to 20 watts of output power. But again, because it's 4x4 MIMO, uh, it can actually produce up to 80 watts of effective performance, thanks again to Eigen Beam Forming. Now, all Streamcaster radios are natively compatible with each other, and it allows you to mix and match whatever your needs are and which of these types of radios and styles and applications are gonna fit your need the best. 
So we're just gonna get into setting up an SC4200 uh, with all the hardware that is compatible with it. Now, as a note, best practice with any radio, before you install any type of power source, uh, you're gonna to wanna to install the antennas first. Now, one of the most common questions we actually get while we're talking about antennas uh, is what bands are these radios actually available in? And that's a great question. Silvus actually offers class leading frequency agility in this regard uh, with variants of this radio in UHF, L band, S band, C band, as well as public safety bands. Now, the other really cool thing is that you can get these in several different ISM bands as well, which includes 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and five gigahertz. Now, this is great because if you wanna purchase string casters that are ISM compliant and don't require any additional licensing, Silvus offers that as an option that you can order. Silvus does offer all of their Man-A radios in single band and dual band options as well. They actually offer up to 30 different frequency band combinations. Now, in terms of power output, the SC4200 is available in one watt, four watt, and 10 watt power output configurations. Taking a look at the IO of the SC4200, you have three different ports for various functionality of the radio itself. Now, all the ports are going to have a tethered uh, protective metal cap to protect the ports when not in use. Now, the little one here is going to be your PTT port, which is probably what you're most familiar with uh, on any type of radio. And this is actually what you'd use to connect any type of PTT or handheld mic like I have here in front of me. So this is just a uh, ops core PTT. This one's actually set up for multiple talk groups. As you can see, uh, it integrates right here. There is actually a red dot that indexes where you install these so you can align it perfectly. Or much simpler would be something like this handheld mic that is uh, gonna have a built-in speaker as well. It's not gonna integrate with uh, your ear pro. It's more so just a, a conventional mic. And like I said, they are uh, indexed, so you know which way to plug them in. The Streamcaster itself actually doesn't have a PTT button on it like some legacy radios. So that PTT port or the use of the Silva uh, Stream LC PTT app on an end user device are going to be how you'll employ voice comms. Next, you're going to have the primary port over here. And your primary port is the connector that you'll use with a programming cable to program the Streamcaster via ethernet or take advantage of any serial data accessories like GPS or camera. Uh, if you're using any type of WinTAC setup, this is gonna be the port that you're gonna use. That would be more so most likely with the 4400, but again, it's going to be the same on the 4200 as well. Finally, you have the auxiliary port. Now it's similar in functionality to the primary port, but it's gonna be for any traffic that's USB based. Uh, this is gonna be the connector that you use for things like your end user device running ATAC, a Wi-Fi dongle, or any other supported application. I do have an end user device cable uh, right here, and that would be uh, what I would plug into my end user device. I actually have that set up over here on uh, this plate carrier here. So you can see I have ATAC running on this plate carrier setup that I have plugged in with a, another 4200. I also have a PTT uh, all interface directly into this radio that has a radio pouch on the plate carrier. Now for controls and status that are on the radio, this has been streamlined as well through the 13 position multi-position switch, which is how you turn the device on. Going from off to on does actually require you to uh, pull on the control knob first, and this is a safety lockout to prevent accidentally turning it on. Now, once it's on, you'll be able to move through these positions. Uh, you really only have to lift to go to the uh, on position. As a note, you'll also have to lift again if you want to turn it off, so you can't accidentally turn it off either. Finally, what we're going to have at the end of the 13 positions is going to be this uh, Z position. Now, like turning it off, you actually have to pull up to enter this position. Now, what does this position do? Uh, what it actually does is that it will reset this radio back to a stock configuration if I leave it there for 60 seconds. Why would I want to do this? What are the benefits of this? If you're integrating with a different team or unit or you just want to start the radio with a clean slate, uh, it's pretty useful. It's also useful from an OPSEC position. So if you need to expediently clear the configuration and wipe the encryption keys from this, uh, just turn it to the Z position and leave it there for 60 seconds. And like I said, it's gonna go right back to a stock configuration. Uh, the indicator LED is how you're actually going to see both the status and the low power warning of the Streamcaster. Now, solid red means the radio is booting and solid green means that it's established a network with another radio. In this case, it's the 4400 that I already have booted up right over here. Uh, now, if it's solid green and you're seeing a occasional flashing red, that just means the battery's under 20% and uh, it's probably, probably getting close to time to changing your batteries. So a lot of data has been streamlined and is really easy to understand through just the LED indicator and using the multi-position switch. 
The multi-position switch actually has about 13 different parameters you can assign to it. It's not just a volume knob. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a volume knob. When we do a video on programming the SC4200, those different parameters will actually be something we go over. But just as a note, uh, there's plenty of different parameters you can actually assign to each and every single position. So since Streamcaster radios use digital encoding for both the voice and data traffic, audio quality is going to be crystal clear. You can also assign multiple talk groups as well, which allows for a massive amount of scalability and hierarchy with how your comms plan integrates with your command structure. You are also going to get super low latency with any type of high bandwidth data that is transmitted over the streamcasters with up to 100 megabits per second of data rate. Now let's talk about some of the things that you can't see externally on the radio. Uh, the SC4200, like all the Streamcaster family, has licensable access to Silvis's Spectrum Dominance package to be installed on it. There are already some great videos on Silvis's website that goes over uh, those features in depth, including on their YouTube, uh, but let's touch on them at a pretty high level. Now, like I already mentioned, the SC4200 natively has Silvis's MN MIMO waveform. It's also going to have AES-256 and FIPS-140-3 level 2 encryption for safe and secure data transmission. Now, this capability and a few other performance improvements, uh, including improved eigen beamforming and anti-jamming capabilities, were included in the most recent software update for these, uh, which is the firmware Streamscape 5. Now, you can read more about Spectrum Dominance and Streamscape 5 at silvistechnologies.com. I, I hope this video was a good information jumping off point and a good introduction to the SC4200 and its capabilities. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated for more videos that we're going to be putting out like this. Uh, leave a comment too on what other topics you'd like for us to cover in future videos. Uh, we do read those. We do get ideas for what you guys want to see from those comments. Uh, thank you guys so much and stay safe.